Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now today we're going to play a little game called Is It Legit? I'm going to show you an item and you have to work out if it's real or not. For example, if I showed you this five pound note, then you would be correct in thinking that it is obviously legitimate. To all of my non-British subscribers, this is actually what our money looks like over here. What you may have seen on the internet is a lie. I'm sorry to let the secret slip out. Things might get harder to decipher though when we look at this. This is a 4GB GTX 750 from a company called AFOX. Now the GTX 750 traditionally features 1GB of VRAM, though there are some 2GB models available. The 750Ti usually has 2 gigs of VRAM, though there are a couple of 4GB cards around. As far as I'm concerned, there are no 4GB 750 non-TI cards available, which would make this one completely unique, a one-off. So let's open up the box. Okay, so the box itself looks pretty good. It's got nice, decent branding. It certainly catches your eye. Opening up the box itself, and we have what you would expect to find with any GPU, a quick installation guide. Now, my main concern with uh, seeing this card for the first time or buying it was that it might not be real, but usually those cards come in those um, sort of plain brown boxes. And from what I can see here, everything looks to be pretty legitimate, but we will get into the details of that a little later on. So with the 750, this is a low profile model as well. So not only have we got four gigs of VRAM, but we've also got a couple of low profile brackets, which is very handy for a little card like this. I have come across cards before that look to be low profile, but when it comes to actually installing them, they don't include a low profile bracket, but this one includes two. So let's open up the main event here, the card itself, which has been nicely sealed, quite thoroughly so inside this anti-static bag, as you would expect to find with any GPU. Now what I will say is that this 750 looks really, really cool. We've got a couple of AFOX brand stickers on the fans here. I think the all gray design looks really good. It reminds me of, um, there was a company that made a GTX 470 a while ago it might be kfa2 something like that they had they had this sort of gray silvery shroud as well and i think that looked good and this looks like a little mini version of that as you can see we have the model number there and this also indicates the amount of vram that this card apparently has it's a great looking card and it would actually be ideal for low profile systems so after installing the card in our Core i5 system, the first thing to do was to open up GPU-Z, which should tell us all we need to know. I've done a little bit of research on the AFOX brand since recording that initial part of the script, and it seems as though they are better known in the Far East. Their cards are usually cheap and cheerful and offer a no-frills experience. That's evident here, as the speeds of the card match that of a base model 750, though the 4 gigs of VRAM is certainly exciting. GPU-Z actually redirects me to the reference NVIDIA card page on Tech Power Up. This doesn't have its own specific listing here. So, it's not uncommon to find certain low-end graphics cards that feature, say, 4 gigs of memory that they can't use. It's also easy to find cards that may have more VRAM than reference designs, but it's super slow DDR3, for example. This uses GDDR5, and better yet, it should be powerful enough to make use of that extra VRAM. Trying to run certain titles with a standard 1GB 750 will often end in disaster, especially in 2021, and some games will even default to a low setting that cannot be tweaked or adjusted in-game. One such example is Red Dead Redemption 2. Exceeding the VRAM limitation with a standard 750 is easy to do, even with the lowest settings at 720p. Our AFOX 4GB card, however, lets us adjust everything as we please, though in all honesty, it still does make sense to use mostly lower settings. And that's exactly what I did here. Let's get into some gameplay and see how the card does. Notice the glorious utilization of the extra GDDR5 memory as we play. 
So in Red Dead Redemption 2 here, I have opted for 720p at the low settings, simply because this is best suited to this GPU. Now, I'm not quite sure what you'd expect from a standard 1 gig 750, but it certainly wouldn't be 30 frames per second, even at 720p due to the low VRAM. I'm just going to run around for a bit here. Let's cause some trouble with the, these guys over here. Okay, I actually have no ammo. Yeah, I don't have any ammo, so we're going to have to do this the old-fashioned Western way with a pocket knife. Let's go. Let's see if we can hijack this thing here. As you can see, our frame rate is still staying pretty stable. Oh dear, this isn't looking good, is it? He's already shot me once. We're averaging around 25 to 30 FPS, but... <laughs> Yeah, that didn't go brilliantly. The exact figures will be up on screen now if I have managed to edit this video successfully, which after a good few years of doing this, you'd like to think I have. So let's uh, wait for the game to load again and continue with our gameplay. As you can see, the card is maxing out at 99, 100% usage as expected. And the VRAM usage is hovering around 3.1 gigabytes. So these settings, even low at 720p, do really make use of this extra VRAM. Even with this load and the uh, demanding nature of Red Dead Redemption 2, the GPU temperature itself doesn't really exceed or hasn't really exceeded 60 degrees here. As you can see at the moment, it's hovering around 55. Though what I will say is that the dual mini fans that this card has do get quite loud. In fact, they're quite loud all of the time. There is no GPU fan stop technology with this, but then again, I'm not sure that any 750s offered that anyway. So let's move on to our next game and see what else this can do. So let's start again with the games in uh, alphabetical order now, hopefully. Uh, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War is best suited to low settings once again. I'm going to be running this at 65% of 1080p. I've stuck with that as a native resolution just so the HUD and that stays pretty much the same size throughout. If we jump into the gameplay now and well, things run actually quite surprising. As you can see, I'm playing one of the Miami maps here. The frame rate is hovering between 40 and 60 FPS a lot of the time. And to be honest, this drop in resolution doesn't make the game unplayable by any means. I do miss the uh, higher texture settings, but if this is a sacrifice that we must make in order to hit closer to 60 frames per second, then so be it. Dropping the resolution scale any lower than this does start to cause some visibility issues, but at around 65%, the game runs fairly well. And as you can see once again, we're using about three gigs of VRAM and the GPU temperature doesn't exceed 60 degrees. Okay, so it's a pretty big one now, Cyberpunk 2077. Obviously we're running this at low with 720p resolution as well and low crowd density. Basically the lowest available in-game settings. I do believe the uh, resolution actually goes a little bit lower but 720p is where I decided to stay. Now despite not being able to hit 30 frames per second I was still quite impressed with this result. Cyberpunk as you know is a very demanding game. Some may call it demanding, some may call it unoptimized but at the end of the day it is pretty hard to run especially on lower end hardware. Here the 750 4 gig card is doing okay when you consider what it actually is and when you consider that a standard 1 gig 750 would probably run the game a lot worse than this. We're using around 2.5 gigs of VRAM now. This only increases as we continue to play. Once again, the GPU temp doesn't really exceed 55 or 60 degrees, but the card is maxing out at 99, 100% usage. And so far, I'm actually impressed with this card. I read a few things about the brand not being brilliant. They are just cheap cards that are ideal in some places for those who haven't got as much to spend. You know, it does the job. And if you want a card that does the job without having to spend too much, then perhaps look into these AFOX cards. So another game that I was actually quite impressed by, this time a game that could actually run with 30 FPS at 1080p, was the newly released to PC Days Gone. Even with 100% resolution scaling here, we managed to achieve 30 frames per second, which honestly is, I believe, quite impressive. Now I'm just running through this opening um, level here. 
somehow I can't even find my way out of the compound. I've played this game for who knows how long on the PlayStation 5. It must be coming up to about 50 hours now, but yeah, oh, here we go. Let's, uh, let's just play a little bit of this mission, and you'll see that the frame rate hovers at around... 30 frames per second at full 1080p so there's been no adjustments to the resolution scaling here and I think for a 750 which is certainly getting on in age now is rather impressive as you can see we're using just under 3 gigs of the stuff though this will start to increase the more we play. Okay so Fortnite's new performance mode probably wasn't really needed here this was just set as the default from the last time I tested this game. I am using 100% 3D resolution scaling, everything else is basically set to low, and the performance mode means that the game is running with lower than low settings. We're just parachuting in here, and as you can see the frame rate is already way above 60, and the average and percentile figures, well, actually the percentile figures do suffer a little bit, that's because there is some micro stuttering every so often you can probably pick that up on the graph on screen this you can't really feel when playing the game to be honest some situations like when you jump out of the battle bus and then you open your parachute that causes an issue with the frame times and then once you hit the ground again that causes an issue with the frame times but overall the gameplay feels fairly smooth and the frame rate hovers between 100 and 200 most of the time. Not much to say with GTA 5 here. I'm using the high settings. I've basically set everything to high but I've turned MSAA off and all the population density variety and distance scaling sliders are set to around the middle. Advanced settings are also off. We'll just sort of do our usual drive here from Vinewood Hills down into the city. This didn't actually do as well as I thought it would. It's not really capable of running GTA 5 with the high settings, which is quite surprising considering how well some of the other games have done and considering just how well this game is optimised, especially when it comes to lower hardware. The frame rate does sort of shoot up towards 60 as we hit the downtown area, but overall, it's not quite as good as what I was expecting. I'd probably recommend using the high textures and setting a lot of other things to normal. So finally, we have the Witcher 3. 1080p once again is no problem for this card. Um, we're using the low presets, both in terms of graphics and post-processing here. This was because I wasn't quite sure what to do. The Witcher 3 can be quite demanding when it comes to... Uh, older hardware especially cards like the 750 but to be honest I think it did okay as I said I went for the low settings just as a sort of default because I wasn't quite sure how it would perform but this seemed to be the right decision as we just about held on to a plus 30 fps average in these more demanding areas especially cities like Novigrad for example as you can see the frame time is a little bit or the frame times I should say are a little bit all over the place but for the most part again you're getting a better than console frame rate but not a better than console visual quality here and as you can see we are utilizing more than one gigabyte of VRAM a normal 750 in 2021 is probably going to give you a pretty bad experience or a worse experience by far than you're seeing today I think because of that immediate limitation but then again, I could be wrong. It might just be helpful in those games that don't let you adjust the graphic settings past a certain point, but perhaps we'll do a comparison. I'll find a 1 gig 750, but this, yeah, I'm quite impressed by it. If you can find one of these, then it's certainly one of the better 750s or the best 750 to go for. So to conclude, AFOX cards are legit. You might not be able to find them so easily in the UK, mainland Europe or the United States, but you might find them inside OEM or pre-built systems every so often. And if you are watching from the Far East, well, these cards may not be new or rare to you at all. You might just be watching this very video with one in your system. Thank you very much for watching, if you like this one leave a like on it down below, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.